Hello, I am Tia Nicole Mandasa of Raven St. Timothy. The Little Red Riding Hood. One day, Red Riding Hood left her home to visit her sick grandmother through the forest. Her mother warned her not to speak to strangers. On her way, she met a big bad wolf and heartfully asked her, Where are you going, little girl? Little Red Riding Hood instantly told him, I am going to visit my sick grandmother who lives in the middle of the forest. The wicked wolf ran fast and arrived at the grandmother's house before her. He pretended to be Red Riding Hood and asked her to open the door. He entered the house and pushed the grandmother into a cupboard and locked it. Then he disguised as the grandmother and waited for Red Riding Hood. As soon as Red Riding Hood entered the house, the big bad wolf pounced upon her. But she screamed as loudly as she could and ran. She slipped into a door at the back of the room and saw the cupboard near it. To her surprise, upon opening the cupboard, she found her real grandmother. Red Riding Hood hurriedly unlocked her grandmother and escaped out of the house. Since then, Red Riding Hood promised never, never to speak to the strangers again. Hello everyone, my name is Kane Martilara Buad, grade 1, 17. Today I will tell you a story about Little Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood left her home to visit her sick grandmother. Through a forest, her mother told her to not speak to strangers. On her way, a wolf asked her, Where are you going? Little Red Riding Hood told him about her grandmother. The wicked wolf ran fast and her grandmother has before her. He pretended to be Red Riding Hood and asked the grandmother to open the door. He entered the house and pushed the grandmother into a cupboard and lock it. Then he disguised as her grandmother and waited for Red Riding Hood. Just as she entered the house, the wolf punched her here. She screamed as loudly as she could run. She found a door at the back of the room and opened the cupboard near it. Inside was her real grandmother. Little Red Riding Hood unlocked her grandmother and escaped out from the front door. Red Riding Hood promised never to speak to strangers again. The end. Thank you for listening. Bye! Good day everyone! My name is Angel Arquebas, a grade 2 pupil of St. Joseph from Camellia Branch. I will tell you a story entitled Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived in a village near the forest. Whenever she went out, she wore a red cloak. So, everyone in the village called her Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood. Red Riding Hood left her home to visit her sick grandmother through a forest. Mother warned her not to speak to strangers. I'm a little Red Riding Hood, Red Riding Hood, Red Riding Hood. I'm a little red red hood walking in 
the forest. I'm a little red red hood, red red hood, red red hood. I'm a little red red hood walking in the forest. On her way, a wolf and asked her, Where are you going? Little Red Riding Hood told him about her grandmother. The wicked wolf ran fast and reached her grandmother's house before her. He pretended to be Red Riding Hood and asked the grandmother to open the door. Tuck, 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 tuck. He entered the house and pushed the grandmother into a cupboard and locked it. Then he disguised as her grandmother and waited for Red Riding Hood. Just as she entered the house, the wolf pounced upon her. Roar! 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 She screamed as loudly as she could and ran. Help! Somebody help me! Help me! Somebody help me! She found the door at the back of the room and opened the cupboard. Near it, inside was her real grandmother. Little Red Riding Hood unlocked her grandmother and escaped out from the front door. Red Riding Hood promised never to speak to strangers again. So the moral of the story is never to trust a stranger. The End guys, this is Cheska from Camellia Branch. The monkey and the chicken. It was a dark, cold winter night in the big, dangerous city. And Cheeky Monkey was shivering as he was walking down a dark street. It was so dark that he could not see where he was walking. As he was walking, he tripped over a creepy fat cat. Ah! The monkey yelled as he fell in the hit the bottom. Splash and yuck! I am covered in a stinky little and gooey. The monkey had and fell into a deep, dark, stinky sewer. 
he was trapped and terrified because he could not get out. And a little while later, a foolish chicken walked by and saw the monkey down in the sewer. Hi, monkey! What are you doing down there? Asked the chicken. Hi, chicken! Come down here so we can play and have a nice swim, said the monkey. I don't know what is that awful smell. As the chicken, the monkey replied, It is so nice down here. The, the water is warm and clean. In the only stinky up there. So the silly chicken decided to jump down into the deep, dark, stinky sewer. As soon as he did, the monkey quickly jumped onto the chicken back and climbed out in of the sewer, leaving a brainless chicken behind. The chicken yelled up to the monkey, Help me! The monkey just laughed. And ran away, leaving the chicken in the cold, dark, stinky sewer. The moral of the story, always look before you live. I thank you. Francesco Sebastian Ditoniaco. I am nine years old and I'm a grade three student from Section St. Anthony from Camellia Branch. And today I'm going to tell you a story about the monkey and the chicken. The monkey and the chicken. It was a dark, cold winter night in the big, dangerous city. A cheeky monkey was shivering as he was walking down a dark street. It was so dark that he could not see where he was walking. As he was walking, he tripped over a creepy fat cat. Ah! The monkey yelled as he fell and hit the bottom. Splash! Yuck! I'm covered in stinky litter and goo. The monkey had fallen into a deep, dark, stinky sewer. He was trapped and terrified because he could not get out. A little while later, a foolish chicken walked by and saw the monkey down in the sewer. Hey monkey, what are you doing down there? asked the chicken. Hi, chicken! Come down here so we can play and have a nice swim, said the monkey. I don't know. What is that awful smell? asked the chicken. The monkey replied, It is so nice down here. The water is warm and clean. It is only stinky up there. So, the silly chicken decided to jump down into the deep, dark, stinky sewer. As soon as he did, the monkey quickly jumped onto the chicken's back and climbed out of the sewer, leaving the brainless chicken behind. The chicken yelled up to the monkey, Help me! The monkey just laughed and ran away leaving the chicken in the cold, dark, stinky sewer. The end. The moral of the story is, always look before you leap and always think before you act. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Aromi and Armalina, grade four from Springville Heights. And today, I'll tell you a story about the monkey and the chicken. The monkey and the chicken. 
It was a dark, cold winter night in a big, dangerous city. A cheeky monkey was shivering as he was walking down a dark street. It was so dark that he could not see where he was walking. As he was walking, he tripped over a creepy fat cat. Ah! The monkey yelled as he hit the bottom. Splash! Yup! And covered in stinky litter and goo. The monkey had fallen into a deep, dark, stinky sewer. He was terrified and trapped because he could not get out. A little while later, a foolish chicken walked by and saw the monkey down in the sewer. Hey monkey, what are you doing down there? Asked the chicken. Hi chicken, come down here so we can play and swim, said the monkey. I don't know, what is that awful smell? The monkey replied, it is so nice down here warm and clean. It is only stinky up there. So the chicken decided to jump down into the sewer. As soon as he did, the monkey jumped onto the chicken's back and climbed out of the sewer, leaving the brainless chicken behind. The chicken yelled up to the monkey, help me! The monkey just laughed <laughs> and ran away leaving the chicken behind in the cool, dark, stinky sewer. The end. The moral of the story is always look before you leave. The Old Man and His Granddaughter Once upon a time, there was a very old man. He can't see so well anymore. Where's <laughs> my glasses? <laughs> He's hard of hearing. Dad, Dad, what did you say? His leg shakes when he walks. At the table, he can't hold his spoon very well. He often spills food when he eats. Some of his soup drips out of his mouth. The man's son and daughter-in-law are disgusted with his habits. They feel sick when they look at him. So at meal time, they make him sit in the corner behind the stove. Dad, stand up. Dad, we gotta sit here. They give him food in a clay bowl, but only a small amount. Dad, use your food. Why so little? The man often looks at his family at the table and tears them from his eyes. One day, the man's hands are shaking and shaking. He can't hold on to the bowl. The bowl falls and breaks. The son's wife yells at her father-in-law. Oh my god, you're so clumsy! You're breaking all of the things in this house! And then he buys him a cheap wooden bowl. And he has
That's the end of the end. What are you doing? I'm making a little wooden throw. My mother and father will eat out of this when I grow up. Look at each other and they began to cry. They bring the old man back to the table. Dad, we're going to see with us again. From then on, he always sits with the family to eat. And no one ever says anything when he spills a little here and there. Well, let's eat. The old man and his grandson. Once upon a time, there's a very old man. He can't see so well anymore. He's hard of hearing. His leg like shakes when he walks. At the table, he can hold his plate very well. He often spills food when he eats. Some of the food drips out of his mouth. The man's son and daughter-in-law are disgusted with his habits. They feel sick when they look at him. So at meal time, they make him sit in a corner behind the stove. They give him a food in a play bowl and only a small amount. The man often looks at his family at the table. Tears come to his eyes. One day, the man's son are shaking and shaking. He can hold on to the pole. It falls to the floor and breaks. The son's wife yells at her father in law. The old man doesn't answer. Then she buys him a cheap wooden ball and he has to eat out of that. A short time later, the four year old grandson is putting together some pieces of food. What are you doing? asks his father. The child answered, I'm making a little wooden food. I threw it a long narrow box for animal feed. Or sloth. My mother and father will eat out of it when I grow up. The husband and wife look at each other. Then they begin to cry. They bring the old man back to the table. From then on, he always sits with the family to eat. And no one ever says anything when he spills a little here and there. That's the story of the old man and his grandson. Hello everyone, I'm Zachary Samuel, astronomer from Grade 5, St. Augustine. The Old Man and His Grandson by the Brothers Grimm Once upon a time, there's a very old man. He can't see so well anymore. He's hard of hearing, his legs shake when he walks. At the table, he can't hold his spoon very well. He often spills food when he eats. Some of the soup drips out of his mouth. The man's son and daughter-in-law are disgusted with his habits. They feel sick when they look at him. So at mealtime, they make him sit in a corner behind the stove. They give him food in a clay bowl and only a small amount. The man often looks at his family at the table. Tears come to his eyes. One day, the man's hands are shaking and shaking. He can't hold on to the bowl. It falls to the floor and breaks. The son's wife yells at her father-in-law. The old man doesn't answer. Then she buys him a cheap pudding bowl, and he has to eat out of that. A short time later, the four-year-old grandson is putting together some pieces of food. What are you doing? asks his father. The child answers, I'm making a little wooden throw. My mother and father will eat out of it when I grow up. The husband and wife look at each other. Then they begin to cry. They bring the old man back to the table. From then on, he always sits with the family to eat, and no one ever says anything when he spills a little here and there. This is the end of the story of the old man and his grandson. Thank you. Have a nice day.